Good afternoon, everyone. Is everyone ready? Yeah, yeah, everyone. yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for your attendance this afternoon. It's greatly appreciated. Um, police are seeking the assistance of a public to identify and locate, more importantly, a woman who absconded from a city media hotel last night. The woman had arrived from Darwin and it was transferred to the City Medi Hotel on her arrival. And last night, unfortunately, left the hotel at around about 7.45 p.m., Saturday the 13th of November. She arrived on a flight from Northern Territory at 2.45 p.m. on Friday the 12th of November, and the woman was tested negative to COVID-19 on her arrival into the state. It will be alleged she provided false identification to police on her arrival. She was last seen wearing the same clothing as seen on the CCTV footage which has been provided to media this afternoon prior to catching a taxi near the intersection of Pulteney Street and Rundle Mall, Adelaide. Anyone who knows the woman's identity and current whereabouts are asked to contact police immediately on 131444. The woman was travelling on a Northern Territory driver's licence. She was using this for her identification to enter the state. Inquiries to date have identified that that is a stolen driver's licence and that's been confirmed by Northern Territory Police. The woman's movement out of the room last night was captured on CCTV footage when she left the room. She immediately went to the fire escape, walked down the stairs of the fire escape and exited on the ground floor. On her exit of her room, CCTV footage was um, captured that image and the alert to security and other people in the hotel was made. The security guard on the ground floor at the exit of the fire escape observed the woman coming out of the ground floor door and leave the building. That person, was, the security officer, was unable to stop her. She was last seen heading towards where we believe and now have confirmed this morning she caught a taxi from the location of the taxi stand, Pomney Street and Rundle Mall. I'm happy to answer any questions in regards to the Escondi, first of all. Craig, was it the Pullman Hotel that this woman was staying in? Hey, it's a, yes, it was. Yes. Did the fire alarm sound when she went down the fire escape? Um, Did that I, normally happen? Or? I can't tell you for fire escape is alarmed. The, yeah. the, um, the um, alarm systems on doors in some of the doorways in some of the many hotels activate. There's a reed switch. Not sure if this particular room had a reed switch. But the movement from her doorway into the passageway was picked up on CCTV. So we're all aware of the moment she left the room. Is there a security guard between where the woman left her room and the fire escape? Is there someone on that level? No, generally not now. Because of the particular virus we're dealing with at the moment, we tend to minimise actual people on the corridor. Um, so we actually rely heavily on the IT solution, which is the CTV yeah. footage. So we try and minimise our security walking the corridor, so to speak, which we did earlier. What What was the, I guess, the reasoning or the detail in terms of why she was needing to be in a Medi Hotel? Well, she was determined to be a um, level six prohibited arrival from Northern Territory, and she was uh, directed to go into the Medi Hotel, which she did. Unfortunately, um, she left without having the approvals. This, this isn't the first time this has happened. I know there was a lot of scrutiny last, last time this happened. How is she seemingly so easily got out of the Medi Hotel again by just passing, based on what you've said, by passing a solitary security guard and walking out? Look, it appears very easy, but if you look at how long we've been doing the Medi Hotel system, the operation, um, we've had three people that have successfully gone beyond the building um, or beyond the perimeter of our security arrangements. So the first one was quite a long time ago now where that person was quickly apprehended by a police patrol in the city. Um, and the second one obviously was out at a um, nightclub or a hotel for a period of time before returning um, the following day. Um, so if, although this is not ideal and certainly on the face of it um, would appear that they just simply walk out, um, we need to remember that 
it's not a prison. This is um, a quarantine supervised facility. It's a hotel complex. I think it's well known. It's not the ideal scenario, but um, it certainly has served us well. And I think when you consider we've only had three people leave um, these many hotel supervised quarantine facilities, that's not too bad of an outcome. Although we're not happy about that. Um, the reality is some people go out of their way to do the wrong thing um, and leave. So we'll be doing our best to locate that person. We're asking for public assistance. If they know this person, they know where she may be now, to ring the police um, so that we can quickly, obviously, resolve the situation. Appreciating that only three people have made it out, um, and that may be a good record, but what, what will happen now? Because, I mean, people might be listening to this, they might have businesses, and we know that this, this woman was, she's not in prison, but if she did have COVID, we know the, the consequences that can come from that in terms of shutdowns and all that sort of stuff. So what happens now, like what happened last time, to try and prevent something like this happening again? Well, the good thing is she has returned a negative for yeah. the COVID-19. Um, so we are obviously conducting an investigation to locate this person as quickly as possible, where we can resume the quarantine period in testing that she would be obligated to undertake. Um, and we're totally reviewing our internal systems for security. Um, we continually do that and we continually strive to make it as secure as possible. But this is another example where we don't have a foolproof 100% system. Do we know what the nature of her visit here to Adelaide is? Does she live in Adelaide or is she a Darwin resident or...? No, I can't, I can't tell you that at the moment. Um, we know that she's entered with false identification. That identification apparently um, was stolen in the last few days in Darwin. Darwin Police have confirmed that. So um, at this stage, um, we're hoping to um, identify who she actually is and then we'll obviously make some concerted effort to track her down. So we don't, know, we, so we don't know if she's a South Australian local? I or don't have that information at the moment. No, I don't. Have we been able to get into contact with the taxi company or driver and yes. we where she went from the city? Yes, we're, we're aware of the taxi driver that's been identified this morning and uh, we know where she was dropped off and inquiries are obviously ongoing in that particular area. What area was she taken to? Um, Keswick. Keswick. And is there any information on her movements from Keswick? Was, no. it, a, was it a house? Or? No, not at the moment, no. Uh, it wasn't a house, it was a group of flats, a large group of flats. Okay, and a she have attended there? And are there people there? And are they It's an people? ongoing investigation as we speak, yes. Are they people like that property? Are they then cooperating? No, I, I can't tell you that level of information, I'm sorry, no. Is there a reason the security guard wasn't able to stop that? Not really. I think we need to remember that they don't actually have any authority to um, go hands-on and stop the person. Obviously, they would attempt to stop and ask them to stop and police would have been responding to that. It was just unfortunate with the space of time. It was very quick um, between the activation of the door, exiting the door, down the stairway and out. She got into the taxi before the police had responded. What kind of consequences or potential punishment awaits someone like or this person? Look, I think we should really focus, and we have right from the word go, of compliance from our community. Um, we're treating this as a health issue, more so than a law enforcement issue. Clearly, this person has gone out of their way to provide false identification to conceal who they are. Um, but our priority is not necessarily to apprehend them for the breach. It's more to bring them back into quarantine and have them undertake their testing regime. That's our priority. But, but given, uh, appreciating that, given they're coming and providing false information or with mm -hmm. false identification, Correct. Um, it seems as though this is, you might assume this is premeditated, but they never intended to stay in any quarantine facility. So yep. do, you, do, you, do you take any different approach in regards to that? Not in the first instance. Our priority is to locate the person and bring them back into the quarantine regime and have them tested. They will potentially suffer, obviously, the breaches of the Emergency Management Act, not like any other person that doesn't comply with the directions. I've got to ask about another matter. Is there... uh, did she fly by the same name as her driver's license? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just on Simon Newchurch, um, I understand he's escaped custody at Murray Bridge. Uh, Correct. Sometime in the last 24 hours. Um, how many officers were with him at the time when he escaped custody? 
Um, I don't have that level of information. I can confirm, obviously, that we asked for public assistance last night after he um, evaded police and escaped our custody. Um, he was in the Murray Bridge um, Hospital. Um, the number of people that were with him, as in police officers, I don't have that level of detail. Um, but I can say uh, thank you for the community for their support, and he's been arrested this morning. Obviously, he will face further charges. And my understanding, just prior to walking in here, a second person has been arrested for aiding and assisting um, with him leaving the hospital. The circumstances I can't elaborate on because I don't know them. Okay. Do you know anything about that person? Like, no. Um, that sort of stuff. No, um, sorry. What kind of resources were used to try and find him? Was, was Polo used in the dog squad? Those sorts of things. I'd imagine so, but that level of detail, I'm sure our media section can provide you with further information. But um, if someone escapes our custody, um, all our resources would have been dedicated to Murray Bridge area in search of him last night. Was Simon known to police before all this, before whatever he was in custody for? Uh, I couldn't tell you that, I'm sorry. No. And is there a, a, an internal investigation within police, I guess, underway? Um, as to how we escaped. We had two, two escapees, I think a couple of months ago, within a couple of weeks of each other. Yep. So, yeah, sorry, so sort of an investigation as well. So the uh, local management in Murray Bridge, and no doubt will be briefing up to the executive, and those decisions will be made um, by tomorrow morning, I would imagine. I can't give you that information at the moment, I'm not aware of it. Great. On another matter, there was a hit run in Modbury um, overnight as well, five teenagers on the run after a five-car collision. What do you make of you know, young people in this kind of behaviour. Um, I'm not briefed on that particular matter, but I know that is obviously a concern if we've got a number of youths in a vehicle um, and a hit run. Um, uh, that sort of behaviour is obviously um, a safety issue for our community and obviously we don't like to see those happening, but I don't know any of the information about that to, to assist you with that. Sorry. Just going back to Simon in the church for a second, was he um, only arrested yesterday before he escaped from... The hospital, or is he in custody elsewhere before he can take him to the hospital? In the I don't have that information. I can only tell you that he was in police custody at the hospital when he escaped. Does anyone else want any information? Were you all aware of a fatal collision this morning? Um, I can give you some information in regards to that if you like. Sure. Um, uh, a man has died following a fatal crash in the southeast in the early hours of this morning. Uh, just before 3 a.m. today, uh, police were called to the Riddick Highway at Tarpina following reports of a car hitting a tree. The sole occupant of a Ford sedan, a 31-year-old man from Mount Gambia, died at the scene. A major crash are currently on the Riddick Highway, which is blocked whilst they undertake their investigation. Riddick Highway south of Tarpena is closed in both directions um, while police are investigating the matter. The man's death is the 87th, which is 10 higher than the same time last year. Uh, I don't have any further information, unfortunately, on that one for you. All good? Yeah.